A few months ago, I uploaded Alpine, a cinematic short film of scenery from Washington's national parks, which despite this being a storm chasing channel is probably the best thing I've ever made. That film was shot during a family vacation to Washington, which was an incredible opportunity that I'll be thinking back to for the rest of my life. What made that trip even better was the chance to stop at Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado on the way there. A result of our transfer flight to Seattle being pushed back a day due to the post-COVID nightmare that is air travel, so call it a happy accident. Anyway, we rented a car and did an afternoon driving tour of the park. And though it didn't really fit thematically into the film, I still had to share the experience. Here we are over southwest Nebraska. Hello, Tornado Alley. Good to see you again. Landing in Denver on a clear day, you get to see the front range of the Rockies which is really exciting for someone like me who's never really seen anything like it before. It's a pretty stunning drive up through the foothills toward the Rocky Mountains proper. You end up in Estes Park, the town that leads into the east entrance of the park. There were still winter road closures, so the most accessible route for a succinct day trip was Trail Ridge Road up to the mountain crest. There's an extensive history of plate tectonics that gave rise to the Rockies. These mountains are younger than the Appalachians, but older than the Cascades, born out of plate collisions that have been slowly molding the western United States over the last 75 million years. As the mountains are raised, the glaciers grind them down, and the sediments are washed away toward the Great Plains. Also take a look at those lenticular clouds, I've never really seen them quite like this. They form as air flows up and over the mountains into a cooler layer of the atmosphere above. The road was closed beyond Rainbow Curve Overlook, but the view from right there was still pretty incredible. This is right below the alpine zone where the trees can't grow any higher up the mountain. Back down the mountains, this is Beaver Meadows, where you can find Rocky Mountain elk. There used to be elk all over the US, but now they're mostly confined to the west in national parks and forests. This park is notoriously crowded throughout the year, but not today for some reason considering what a perfect day it was. Below Long's Peak here, you can see a small burn scar through the forest. The fires in Colorado have been pretty extreme in the last few years, especially in 2020 when 30,000 acres burned inside the park. And those were just small portions of the largest fires that Colorado has ever seen. We actually saw a couple of grass fires while driving through the Boulder area. But these forces of nature are the reason that these national parks even exist. It takes catastrophic and powerful events to raise these mountains and carve these canyons. From volcanic eruptions and great earthquakes, to the constant meticulous weathering of wind and water. 
A trip through a national park is a glimpse into the workings of our dynamic planet and the conditions that can be so hostile to life, yet are necessary for it to exist and flourish. Check out Alpine Washington's National Parks for a cinematic journey through the beauty and tranquility of these incredible forces of nature. <laughs>